a rhythm after the game was slowed down a little bit, and they did a great job of, uh, of countering that. So um, something we can learn from, and uh, you know, it's always great to have games like that. Yeah, what's the balance between frustration at a loss that you feel like you should have had and then also kind of acknowledgement of, uh, of the bigger picture for you? Oh, well, I mean, obviously, you, uh, you, you, you know, you're frustrated anytime you lose, um, you know, especially when you know you could have played better. And uh, we know we could play much better, so you learn from all of that and, and uh, you know, apply it to the next game. Bill? Hey, LeBron, uh, you had a couple of travels in the in the fourth quarter, um, specifically that first one, I think, after. Uh, <laughs> you just just want to talk us, us through those then? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I seen I seen them on replays, and uh, you know, it's a move I've been making pretty much my whole career. And if that's if that's the the, the call that's going to be called travel, then I would like to see it across the whole board. Uh, you know, every game and it consistent like that. I mean, it's so funny because the very next play. Uh, you know, Draymond gets into the lane and, and slides his foot and it's not called. And the same official who called me for the travel is right there on the play and told me he didn't travel. So um, that's definitely, uh, uh, you know, something that I, you know, I got to be more, you know, leery about. But I have not been called uh, for travels like that in, in my career. Kyle. Hey, LeBron, um, as a team, I think you guys only had four fast break points and uh, on that last possession before the timeout. Um, you, it looked like you might have a transition opportunity. Do you guys feel like you were attacked enough in transition on offense tonight? Um, I think um, at times, including myself, we settled for the perimeter shot in transition. Um, I said attacking to the rim, but, you know, we've been pretty good at that all year. And, um, you know, some games you're going to have – you know, we would love to be in transition more, but you got to get stops one to, to be in transition. And um, in the fourth quarter, you know, they did a good job of not allowing us to get too many stops. Hey. Kyle said, LeBron, Kyle Kuzma said that uh, it, it's 72 game season and, and maybe it's going to be hard to keep the urgency up. Is there some human nature complacency going on here that, that could have been part of the recipe tonight? No. Nah. Melissa, I'm oh, sorry, Dan. LeBron, um, you guys probably won't play very many games this season where you and AD combined to score, I think, 36 points or something like that offensively. <laughs> Why was it so disjointed, um, do you think, for the two guys offensively tonight? Uh, I mean, both of us was just a little bit out of rhythm, um, you know, and you know, and I think, uh, you know, we're going to have games like that this year where we're out of rhythm. The best thing about our team is we had guys that picked us up. You know, Dennis was uh, was great. Um, you know, uh, you know, Trez again coming off the bench was great. Uh, Kuz, you know, it, you know, got high force a little bit in that third, made some shots for us. So, um, you know, when times where we both uh, are just a little bit out of rhythm, uh, we have the ability to, to have our teammates that picked us up and still give us a chance to win, which we had tonight. Last three, uh, Melissa. Hey, LeBron, um, we're approaching the one year anniversary of Kobe's death, and you obviously have done so much to honor him, including winning a title in his honor. I'm curious, when you think back to the events of that day, how do you process the emotions of it and just sort of the emotions of the year that followed afterwards? Try not to take my place, uh, take myself back to that position or that place or that, that time frame. Um, obviously, he's looking down on us, um, you know, along with Gigi um, and just proud of, uh, of what we're trying to do here as an organization. And uh, hopefully we continue to make him proud as well and make her proud uh, toward the Pope and the gold every night. So um, I don't want to live in the past. I definitely don't want to live out that day again. So, you know, it's about always continue to move forward and continue to live on his legacy. Last two, Mark Medina. Hey, LeBron, in a uh, two-part here in lieu of Martin Luther King Day, you had shared in the bubble that you were reading the autobiography of Malcolm X. So I was wondering, is there a book about Martin Luther King or one of his speeches that really resonates with you? And what do you draw from how both Martin Luther King and uh, Malcolm X brought about change on the um, so I've never, I've never read an autobiography of Martin Luther King. Um, you know, obviously, I grew up every... You know, in school, you can talk a little bit about them, you know, especially during Black History Month, things of that nature. But as I continue to grow and continue to uh, come into myself, you you just read um, a lot of his teachings, a lot of his uh, speeches, um, uh, a lot of his uh, forecomings and things that he believed in and things that he preached that would be better for the change of America and change for the better people. So 
Um, you know, when you just look at some of his uh, most famous quotes and things that he was able to uh, say to the people and and believe in it's things that we're going through right now, it's things that if we apply, then it, it will make our society a lot better. Um, he was a man of the people and um, and he had a lot of power and a lot of power. And that's why he was um, ultimately gunned down, unfortunately, because of the power and the power that he had for the people. People uh, resonated with him. People believed in him. People wanted to walk with him and, and, and talk with him and be with him. Um, and, um, you know, you just live on. You, you, his, his, his legacy, along with Malcolm X, uh, continues to live on uh, about what they preached and what they believed. Uh, you guys were up 17 early in that third quarter. What are some of the things, what are some of the reasons that you saw for you guys losing the game tonight? Um, sense of urgency. I think that's the biggest thing that really uh, happened from a, a team perspective. Um, you know, anytime having a lead going up 17, 20, you kind of always, uh, I wouldn't say always, but there's uh, there's an area where you can, you know, take your, your, your foot off the gas. And that's kind of what we did. And, uh, stop scoring and stop defending for a section, and they got back in the game. Yeah, you mentioned the defense. You guys came in as a top-rated defense in the entire league, but tonight, especially in that second half, he gave up, I believe it was uh, 67 points, and guys like Eric Paschal kind of kept getting it through the through the defense and, and scoring on layups. Did you kind of see the same thing, too? Um, yeah, you know, I don't want to uh, you know downgrade someone like him because he's a, he's a good player. A uh, young player, but um, uh, you know they just had a lot of different opportunities to score. You know, we just put our foot off the gas, rotation, missing rotations, um, allowing um, people to get behind the defense and score, like you kind of just did. And, um, Steph hit a couple of shots. Ubre had a few layups. Um, you know, um, it happens. You know, it's a long season. You know, it, it's it's kind of hard to keep that sense of urgency of the team uh, for 72 games, and we just uh, let one slip. So. And Kyle, last one um, from me. Uh, you guys have been really uh, shooting well from three-point range. Didn't happen tonight for you guys. Was that kind of a, a, a talk in the locker room? Offense kind of fell apart in the defense uh, as well, as you've mentioned. No, nobody's never really worried, honestly. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to downplay losses, but... Um, you know, everybody has, has the same spirit they've had all, all year. Um, does suck to lose, but, um, you know, it's not, uh, it's not like we're done. Let's hear from Frank Vogley speaking with Mike Trudell and the media on Zoom. Hey, Frank, what did you think happened tonight? Uh, we got outplayed in the second half. Um, simplest way to put it. You know, we didn't defend at the at the rate that we've been the last few games, or, or that we that we did in the first half. Um, you know, they downsized with the second unit, gave us some problems. Um, you know, and then offensively, we just we got hesitant, tried to overpass a few different times, and uh, you know, we didn't have a, a, a great offensive fourth quarter to try to close things up. Just that final sequence there after you get the rebound, uh, what was your thinking? And sometimes, of course, you get a, a good shot if you go down and don't call the timeout. But how did that play evolve? And what were you seeing before you finally got one? Yeah, we had a, a chance to attack, attack in transition before their defense was set. Uh, we wanted to look at that when uh, you know when it was clear that we weren't going to get a great look in transition. We called a timeout, and um, you know we got a decent look with Bron, you know, coming coming up to gut. Dave. Uh, Frank, you were teed up for um, your reaction to Schroeder getting pushed to the ground uh, or like, taking contact and falling to the ground. And then there was that sequence where LeBron was called for a travel and then Draymond scored in the lane and some of the guys were called for a travel. How much do you think the officiating affected tonight's outcome? I don't have anything to say about the officiating. Dan? Frank, um, how did you feel about kind of just the overall late game organization? Um, it seemed like you guys had a little of a hard time to kind of get in and out of stuff. Um, yeah, really we got we got hesitant, you know, and uh, you know that's an area. You know, it's an early uh, early game in a season um, that you watch that, and it's an opportunity to learn from it. You know, we uh, like I said, we got we just got hesitant uh, on the offensive end, a little casual. Um, you know, I'd say it's at certain points in the game. Um, which you can't do with a lead against a team team like that that has great firepower. 
And, um, you know, th their pressure was, was decent. Uh, I thought most, uh, most offensive possessions we were organized, but, you know, like I said, we either hesitant or, or overpassed and, um, you know, has had a lot of lost possessions in the fourth. Uh, Kyle. Frank, um, obviously, you know, you guys are on the winning streak. Your last four games have been blowouts. Do you feel like, um, you know, perhaps you can maybe take a little complacency from that and, and that might have contributed to what happened today? No, I think if, uh, if we came out sluggish, we could say that. I, I thought we came out uh, with great energy, built up a, a big early lead. Uh, we just didn't sustain it, you know, um, you know, just one of those lessons that we can learn from. Last two, Bill. Uh, Kyle kind of asked my question, but I guess could you speak a little bit more about the, um, the about the lesson of complacency and, and taking your foot off the gas, and and how can you apply that in a season when you are going to have a target on your back the rest of the way? Well, yeah, it's a forty-eight minute game. You know, our guys understand that, and um, and sometimes if you do it and you don't take a take a loss, you don't learn a lesson. So. Um, you know, hopefully our guys will learn that lesson from this game. You know, uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't all, all complacency. I mean, you credit the Warriors. Uh, we didn't handle um, you know what we we felt were some some bad calls. Uh, we let it distract our focus some. And um, you know, like I said, offensively, look, we've been really passing the ball well and, and trusting the pass. And there was a few possessions we had we had great possessions where the guy didn't take the shot because he was thinking one more. So you know, those are good problems. And um, you know, we'll go to the tape and and, and correct it. Jovan. Hey, Frank, uh, you mentioned that yesterday you guys spent a lot of time going over the intricacies of, of defending Steph. How did you feel you did in that regard tonight and maybe breaking it down first half or second half? Yeah, I mean, uh, again, I'll have to look at the tape. There was, I mean, he's got the ball the whole game, you know, so uh, there was plenty of good defensive possessions, uh, you know, plenty where we had breakdowns. Uh, either sending them to the screen or, or um, you know, protecting.